the Da Vinci Code when you've got Newcastle United. Here's a story that's got it all. Drama, suspense, high finance, record breakers, a twist of the plot at every turn, and even a happy ending. Sit back and enjoy our review of the season for 2005-2006. We've every goal from every game, of course. Michael Owen talks exclusively about the record signing that rocks football. We'll hear from Turkish international Emre, his English really has come on. Mr Consistency takes a bow, Shea Given gives his best for every single minute. And let's hear it for an old friend, music man Nobby hits the high notes. The new manager gives us the inside story on the Roda revival. The summer would bring a few notable departures from 12 months previously. Bellamy, Butt, Milner, Robert and Viana were among the names who had or would move on before August was out. But the arrivals lounge had also been busy with Turkish international Emre flying in from Inter Milan. Talented midfielder was a superstar in Istanbul, where he'd impressed Graham Souness at Galatasaray. The defence had been boosted by Australian international Craig Moore from another of the manager's former clubs, Rangers. Tenacious midfielder Scott Parker was another massively impressive capture from the outskirts of Chelsea. The squad needed to blend quickly as Newcastle season kicked off in mid-July. United faced the long route to European competition via the Intertoto Cup. The season started for real on a Sunday afternoon in Slovakia against ZTS Dubnica, and the hundred or so travelling fans only had to wait four minutes for the campaign's opening goal. James Milner opened the way for Michael Chopra. Two more minutes made it two goals in two attacks. Charles and Zogbia's shot was deflected in by Svestka. Alan Shearer's claims for the credit were ruled out by UEFA. But three minutes before half-time, the home side got into the game when Tesak planted the ball past Steve Harper. But with 20 minutes left, Robbie Elliott's ball forward gave Milner the chance to complete a successful trip. And United were set up for a comfortable home leg the following Saturday. Shearer. Well, Shearer might have been enjoying a European holiday instead of a European campaign if he hadn't changed his mind. Well, at least John thinks it was the right decision. Milner with the corner. And Shearer! Welcome back, Alan. And Shearer starts his bonus campaign in the only way you would expect. Great corner from Milner and an excellent header. Pass ball in and Shearer powers in for a second. 2-0, 5-1 aggregate now. And Shira is obviously going to enjoy this last season. Great ball in, one he loves to fight for, and he won it, of course. Any thoughts that the Inter Toto was an easy backdoor to the UEFA Cup were soon dispelled just four days later when United faced Spain's experienced European campaigners, Deportivo La Coruña, in their semi final. A bit of a slip there, here is Benitez, Tristan waits, there's Luque at the far post. Oh, a disaster for Newcastle United. It's taken only ten minutes for Deportivo to drive through, and it's the baby of the team, Ruben Castro. By Boomsong Taylor. The heavyweights congregate at the near post. Molina's protected. Oh, yes! Newcastle are back. And that was an absolute beauty from Lee Bowyer. What a strike that was. Fantastic. It was a great delivery in. Lee Bowyer would be absolutely delighted. On his so-called weaker foot, his left foot, he has smashed that into the top corner. And Bradley makes a wonderful run from the central defender's position. Deep into Newcastle half, and that is a great, great goal. Setting the tempo, playing with great verve now. 
Bayes cross. Boya! Yes! The kid has done it for Newcastle. James Milner with an instinctive goal that gives Newcastle United the edge. Stephen Carr does ever so well here, sets the tempo. It's not the best of crosses here, not the best of shots, but he's there, he's alive. And for me, he's just onside. Great finish, outside of the boot. A little bit of luck that you need. This ain't the best of crosses. That's not the best of shots, but that's a superb little tap-in with a finish. The final minute of the first half. The final task. Newcastle's well-oiled defence is given. Comes on! Deportivo right on the break, steal the goal, and it's that man Andrade again. Elliot, all short of given. What a terrible back pass that was. It's two on one. Car only half stops Deportivo, and that could be the golden goal for Pedro Manites and Deportivo La Coruña. Well, Emre is well capable of. Uh, Stinging a goalkeeper's gloves from this distance, maybe 35 yards, his pocket size, but he's powerful. I told you. It was only August the 3rd, 11 days before the Premiership even kicked off, that Newcastle were out of European competition. It was a major setback already. We got knocked out. We weren't we weren't good enough to, to go through, and and um, it was a shame because we wanted to get back in Europe. This season's been a bit strange, not playing in Europe. Um, you know, it seems to be very long weeks when there's no midweek game. It's, it seems very strange um, when you're so used to playing in Europe. You know, even on a Thursday or whatever, and Thursday Sunday, you get used to it. But it was kind of strange this season not to play, and made the sort of during the week quite long. Scott Parker was back in London for his United debut as Newcastle kicked off their domestic season at Arsenal. Emre joined him in a new look central midfield for the club's last ever league game at Highbury. And here's Shearer, and that always means danger. Close. Gilberto fouled. What action does the referee take here? He's reaching for a card, and oh. it's a red card. A red card for Genus. Well, that has shocked everyone, I think, at Highbury, including the Arsenal men and Graham Souness, who has had many spectacular fallouts with referees over the years, cannot believe that Mr Bennett has taken such a strong line so early on here. Jermaine Genus has only got his eyes on the ball there, look there, I'm going to go for the ball with his left foot, it's his right foot following through that maybe catches Gilberto, it looks very dramatic, I've got to be honest, I think he's unlucky, and I think Graham Souness is entitled to be very disappointed with that. Pires. Baron, here's Jungberg. Well, I thought it was a good tackle, but I... The referee has pointed to the penalty spot he has. Well, Charlie and Zogbia thought he'd made a clean challenge, and does that mean that Newcastle's brave resistance is about to be ended? Thierry Henry, not the man you want to be facing, ten minutes from the final whistle from the penalty spot. but couldn't keep it out. Right, winning it back, played a slightly dangerous ball, but he's got away with it to Gilberto and on to Freddie Jungberg, the man brought down for the penalty. Aaron charging forward down that right-hand side again, gets it back to Jungberg, Van Persie's in the middle. And that is that. The young Dutchman has clinched the points for Arsenal. The opening league game at St James's Park against West Ham saw a tremendous ovation for an old friend. Lee Clark came off the bench for his second United debut after eight years away. Sheringham once again finding space. Now Marlon Harewood. 
Sheringham again, and onside, it's Ben Ayoun. And can they scramble it in? No, they can't. With the foul, and what's the card going to be? I played the ball, surely. Tim McGallagher didn't think so. There's a wait now. It is a red card for Paul Kinczewski. He is sent off, and West Ham are down to ten men in controversial circumstances here. In comes the corner meantime, which Ben Ayoun clears. And Carroll having to tip that one over. Yaro now. Here's Milner. Are they going to nick it late on? No, they are not. It's Parker who blazes it over. Carr flinging it across, looking for Alan Shearer. And here's Fight. In from Celestine Babayaro. Shearer's up there. Has to get ahead of down. Oh, it's off the line. Scott Parker's attempt, cleared off the line by speed. Brunson. So Potter's ball looking for Nicky Hunt, who got there ahead of Amiobi. Hunt again, tries to bend one round the back, two for Ives! And El Hadstube scores for Bolton! And heaps further pressure on Newcastle United. Can Hunt provide again? Could have used more work to do from that cross, but he's accomplished that task. Speed flings in for Bennett, and Janikopoulos turns it in. 2-0 Bolton. The summer signing spree was still going strong. With only days left to the end of the transfer window, Graham Souness splashed out around nine million on left-sided attacker Albert Luque from Deportivo La Coruña. The manager pitched him straight in at the deepest of ends against Manchester United. And he came close to making a spectacular entrance. That's not a bad ball for Baba Yaro. And the cross play for Shearer! Chance for Luque! What a start! But wait, his joy is short-lived. The linesman's flag rules out a debut goal for the Spaniard. Well, it all started with this ball from Scotty Park. It's a fantastic ball, because it picks out Bobby Yaro, and when he plays it in, it's hit first down, but you can see Luque's a good two yards offside. Cars cross, and a chance again for the new man. I think he'll do better than that, and I hope he will. Can Luque still get his debut goal? Oh, that was the chance. There was the chance. But in the transfer market, the very best was still to come. Tyneside erupted as Michael Owen became the club's record signing in the most dramatic of moves from Real Madrid. Thousands of fans flocked to St James's Park for the great unveiling of one of England's most lethal international strikers. I uh, said so right from the outset that, that I have obviously attachments to Liverpool and if that deal could have happened and um, whatever then then that would, you know, would have been one big option but as the deadline um, approached there didn't seem any way that that one would be possible. The lure of Liverpool was there for everyone to see, you know, all the things that um, were very obvious to anyone who um, knew the situation. But I was confident if we could if we could get them here to Tyneside and we could sit down in front of them and talk football with them, we could convince them to come here, and that's how it's worked out. Shades of the day, Shearer signed, but these scenes were for a new number 10. Yeah, when I came up to Newcastle to, to look around the place and whatever, it was, uh, it was an impressive place and I, I knew the fans were very passionate and that's what I felt I was missing out in Madrid, you know, that passion of the English game and there's probably no more passionate people than the Newcastle people for, for their football. Well, I, I think it's been said by many people that signing for Newcastle and the reception I got and whatever never happened at any other club. And 
I believe that as well. I mean, you don't get over 20,000 people welcoming, you know, a player to sign anywhere. So it was a it was a special moment, and um, it was it was a great moment. It was a moment I'll I'll never forget. I don't think you ever believe it until you see things. And as you know, Alan was telling me, and everyone was telling me, you know, if you if you came here, that you know what it'd be like. So not surprised in that. You know, I knew there was going to be a lot of interest, but as I say, until you see the the volume of people, then it was a surprise. Yeah. There's only one Mike alone available, and um, once again we stepped up to the plate and secured him. We went to him, got him, and we won the day. It wasn't a case of anybody else uh, coming in. We satisfied Madrid with the bid. Um, he had to sign the paper, of course, and say he wanted to come. If he didn't want to come, he wouldn't be here today. But there wasn't any other competition. We blew them out of the water. They knew they couldn't uh, come anywhere near them. And the backing that the chairman gives to his managers and stuff, then. You know, you, you don't doubt anything, and, and it was fantastic, fantastic to, for the chairman and the manager to get Mike alone, a player of that calibre, to the football club. In a frantic close to the August window, the popular Peruvian Nobby Solano rejoined the club from Aston Villa. Jermaine Genus had been making noises about being unsettled in Newcastle and moved to kickstart his career at Spurs. International weekend delayed Michael Owen's debut till Fulham arrived at St James's Park. With just one point and not a single goal from the opening four games, United needed a lift. But the dreaded I word was to enter the club's daily vocabulary. Albert Luque was to pick up an injury that kept him out for two months. And this is Luis Boamorte. Locked away by Bramble. And that was a dangerous back pull. And it's real danger here for Newcastle. And it's Brian McBride who puts Fulham ahead. Here's Nicholas Jensen. Boom, some allowed it to bounce, and McBride was there. Well, really, the ball should never have got through to the American. Boyer's delivery, back for Stephen Carr! Oh, back off the crossbar! <laughs> and Zogbia, oh, what a goal! Well, that's some way to get your first Premiership goal and Newcastle's first goal of the season. I'll tell you what, the little man deserves that. He's been outstanding since he's come on. He's been bright, he's been positive. What a strike this is. Oh, was that a pull back on Jensen? If it was, Parker could be in real trouble. He's already been booked. And it is a red card for Scott Parker. Newcastle down to ten men just moments after they got back on level terms. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. I mean, over 50,000 people watching a game of football and you're, you're out there in the middle. If you don't enjoy that, then you won't enjoy much. It was Friends reunited day at Blackburn. Craig Bellamy had left Newcastle after the most public of bust-ups possible with the manager. Now was his chance to have the last word. Shearer to strike. After 25 hours and three minutes without an English Premier League goal, Shearer is back on target on the day he's come back to Ewood. Fight. Gresco. Lee Clark. And Zogbia. It's a fabulous header from Michael Owen, it really is. That's why you get the checkbook out and pay £16 million. Pound. Nelson, Taylor. 
was Kuchi again, but Fabiaro was there first. But the referee has spotted an infringement, and there could be problems here. Second bookable offence. Stephen Taylor is off for Newcastle. He appeared to be shoulder to shoulder with Craig Bellamy. Whether or not he's grabbed his shirt again, it's unnecessary because the referee's got a very good view of it. And there's no flag. Newcastle can finish it here. And they have. And how Charles and Zogbeer. Blackburn looked for an offside flag and they looked in vain. And Newcastle United, who came here under such pressure to produce a result, are three goals to the good now. Hopefully, you know, we've got a chance to get some of the, the um, big players back next week and hopefully the confidence we get from today will help us next week. Hopefully that'll be the one that uh, sets us off and gives us the confidence, I think, because when we went 1-0 up and we got the confidence, uh, we've done very well. The team had been enjoying seeing themselves on the big screen as the football movie Goal had its Tyneside premiere. The city of Newcastle and its football team were to emerge as real stars, just as much as the Mexican boy who crossed the Atlantic to seek fortune at St James's Park. Forget the Intertoto, bring on the Oscars. How about the Seve Trophy? When the Wynyard Golf Club on Teesside staged this prestigious international event, United's golfers couldn't wait to get on the tee. Seve Ballesteros was handing out the invitations to the pre-event Pro-Am. It was the footballers' turn to be starstruck. Some great golfers here. And golf is, is my second love, to be honest, and every opportunity I, I try and play it, but uh, it's not very often you get to play with some of the, yeah, some of the big boys like we are today. You're always smiling when you're playing golf. A bit easier for the Newcastle. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normally banging my clubs to the, on the ground. No, it's, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's, a, it's obviously a, a difficult game for those of us who are not so great at it. But we give it a go. I've played more golf in the last week than I have in the last year. I think we've got a lot of interested players in the Newcastle team, so it's uh, it's good. Who's your money on? <laughs> not too sure. I just uh, I'm looking forward to the first tee shot, really, to see which one of the three crumbles. Like um, money's on Hobbs to be the one who crumbles. Down, usually attracted to the same ball. Drops Savoya. We put Owen through. Michael Owen. It's his first goal here for Newcastle. But the fact that it's a, a second successive game in which he scored tells you what he's all about. As if you didn't know. by uh, Distant, and Owen is in again, and this time David James, Grand Paul being asked the question by Owen as to whether he was pushed down at the end of it, second chance. It's Owen, he's behind Distant, and that is very encouraging for Newcastle again. A night off at the North East Football Awards and the chance for the team to applaud their brilliant keeper Shea Given for the region's save of last season in the FA Cup against Spurs. Vukic, cleverly done again, Gary O'Neill, Silva, good save by Shea Given. Good ports with pressure, Priska with the cross, Taylor, what a save! Another outstanding Shea Given save, keeps it at nil-nil. That's the best so far, a great ball in, Taylor thinks he scored. Again, Boomsong got caught underneath the ball, but that is an outstanding save. 
It's an outswing of this side, and again, Matthew Taylor denied by Shea Gibbons heroics. Another international break, but St James's Park was still in the TV spotlight as the club once again played host to Sky One's football reality show, The Match. Tyneside responded brilliantly, especially as the showbiz celebrities got their big chance against former Toon stars like Philippe Albert, Warren Barton and Peter Beardsley. Picked off the head of Boomsong. Problems here for Newcastle. Oh, he's hit the post. Shea Given has just surpassed his own record for the longest time without conceding a goal. Here, though, come Newcastle at the other end, and the post intervenes for the second time in the game. John Fallon was well beaten. It was a trundler of a shot from Lee Bowyer, really. Is Francis, good ball, chance for Wigan, given to the rescue, but not sufficiently so. Jason Roberts with the breakthrough. Shearer's header! Newcastle appeal, referee looks across towards Andy Williams and gets no response. Newcastle convinced the ball was in. Oh, very difficult to see, a lot of bodies in there, it's a great leap from Alan Shearer. Oh, he looks well behind the line. Leighton Baines, I think. Uh, he's falling back. Well, that helped him. Amiobi, Shearer. Here comes Charlie and Zogbia. Shearer. Oh, just passed. The long-awaited derby game against Sunderland arrived on a Sunday lunchtime. Mick McCarthy's team were enduring a nightmare return to the Premiership, but any Newcastle fans who thought the old enemy would be easy meat might have underestimated the power of... Beating Sunderland was Alan Shearer's last game as a Premiership footballer. What a way to go. I've never been one for... For glory, I wanted to go out against Chelsea, scoring a goal and winning the game. That's what would have been great. Um, but it's, it, it wasn't to be. I went out at Sunderland, scoring a goal and winning the game, and winning the best uh, game at Sunderland, I think, for, for 50 years. So it's not a bad way to go out. After the game, you just see the, the, the relief and the, the smiles all around, and it just makes everything worthwhile. We were on the bus on the way back, and we, uh, we joined in with the, the parade, the Newcastle fans, and... The atmosphere is fantastic and something that will live with the lads forever. Newcastle's greatest goal scorer seemed to accept the end of his playing days with philosophical good grace. The tributes to an unbelievable career were pouring in along with the awards. HMV presented this one for lifetime achievement. On the pitch, Shearer's absence gave Shola Amiobi another chance to press his own claims. And there was a full debut for 19-year-old South African-born midfielder Matty Pattinson. Newcastle nearly providing one of their own. Pattinson might yet. He drags his shot wide, but Solana could not have come closer. Newcastle, it's Norberto Solana that has the goal that could spell untold damage on West Brom's hopes of staying in the Premiership. Zompia, Chopra. Five. Not too far away from his first goal in English football. West Brom still with only one shot against their neck. Pushed by Clement on Chopra. It's a penalty. And West Bromwich Albion's afternoon goes from bad to worse. Shona Amiobi. Try and nail. 
West Bromwich Albion's coffin even further. Kushak almost got there, but couldn't. Newcastle two up inside the first half. And West Bromwich Albion's time in the Premiership could be coming to an end. Here's Amiobi. 3 0. Who needs Alan Shearer? Five wins on the spin for Glenn Roder, who'd certainly given United a far more solid feel at the back. We have a number of defenders, um, seven, eight defenders if they're, if they're all fit. It's a question of finding the partnership across the back four that works the best. Craig Morton has done fantastically well for us and has formed a, a partnership with uh, Titus Bramble. Boonsong, since he's been out of the team, his attitude to training and to be ready to go back in when needed has been first class. You had a lot of senior players when they left out the first team, suddenly want to go in and see the physio, they're injured, uh, they don't want to put it in in training. He's done exactly the opposite to that. He's doing everything he can to get back into the team. There, there are times in games where uh, he shows what he's capable of. I mean, when you look at him, physically, he looks the ideal size for a central defender. Pace, lots of pace, strength. Um, and uh, you know they're the sort of requirements you, you, you look at when you when you're first looking uh, for um, for central defenders. I think sometimes um, he, he himself is, is an honest person. He sometimes you know has felt that at times this year maybe he's made a wrong decision. You know that uh, unfortunately at this level you uh, you get punished for. If one United player was entitled to sing his own praises, it was keeper Shea Given, but he didn't need to. His fellow pros did that, choosing him in the PFA Premiership Team of the Season. I like to play every minute of every game, and you know I, I pride myself on playing as many games as I can for Newcastle and, and for Ireland as well. So um, I don't know. I'm just trying to focus on what I've got to do. You know, I know if I really focus on my own job and 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 do what I have to do, then that helps the team, and that's that's the main thing. It's all about the team, and you know it's been a pretty decent season for me to get picked in the PFA Team of the Year. Was a you know. For your fellow professionals to pick you and the team was, was fantastic for me and you know I, I thought it might have went unnoticed because we were sort of mid table when I think we had to put the ballots in for the for the like for the for, for the vote but you know I was very very happy to, to get that award. England fans were delighted to see Michael Owen back on the bench for the first time all year at Birmingham. But Blues fans and Geordie manager Steve Bruce had enough worries of their own with the Midlanders two points adrift in the relegation zone. Tennant, first time. Heskey. And Shea Given stops it, bouncing, bobbled towards him. Michael Chopra is going off, and Michael Owen is coming on after four months out with that fractured metatarsal. It's a welcome sight for England fans. Here's Stephen Carr with the cross. Owen! Back in the hunt. Birmingham's need is so urgent, but the free kick bounces off the wall. Melchior. Oh! Fossil! Given stops it! And again! And Shea Given may well have condemned Birmingham to relegation. It had been a tough four months for United's record signing, what with injury setbacks and constant sniping about his future at Newcastle. I think I and Newcastle fans have, have probably got to get used to these, you know, silly things in the papers um, on a regular basis, which it has been. I mean, um, on, the, on the flip side, if I heard supporters saying things like that, then it would disappoint me because I've done nothing but give, you know, 100% in the black and white shirt and, a, you know, Signed up here in the first place and been proud to to uh, to play for the club and you know unfortunately well when I have played I've, I've obviously scored a few goals and we've won a few games and um, the only sickener of the season is getting injured but you know he was in a black and white shirt and I was you know um, trying to score a goal at the time for Newcastle so you know I don't think anyone can um, think it always 
off doing anything else or playing for England and doing it and whatever and he, you know, labelled me with anything else. I mean it was it was, you know, trying to score a goal for, for Newcastle United, so um and you know, inevitably no matter what happens, you know, there's all the national press wanna to speak to about World Cups and things like that and I could do a you know, an interview that has a hundred questions and ninety nine would be about Newcastle and then they plug one England one and you know, you you answer it and it's just headlines about the World Cup all the time, so you know that's uh, that's unfortunate, and that's probably the, the price that Newcastle pay for for you know having me in a way because it's uh, you know there's there's so much more to to the season in a way uh, for the media than than just the Premier League season, obviously with the World Cup at the end of it. So it's been frustrating all all way round, really. Um, as long as the fans. You know, always um, pleased with my contribution. I'll always give 100, 100 percent, and um, then that'll do me. I mean, I can put up with media. Whoever puts on. Um, no, I mean, I definitely expect to to uh, take up the baton that he left off in terms of scoring goals and um, being the top goal scorer for the for the club in the in the years to come. So, yeah, that's uh, something that I've definitely got my, you know, a responsibility to do. Um, that's what I was bought for to to score goals and um, Alan obviously finishing and. Me coming into the uh, the fold, I, I suppose that's uh, you know my responsibility, and I'm I'm sure I'll do that. The fan base we've got with the stadium we've got, you know, St James's Park should be a you know really difficult place to come and win a game, and, and we've got to make it that way. And you know, if you have a good home form, then you're always going to pick you know points uh, on your travels, and that would be uh, you know that's what it's got to be based on. But you know, we'll see what the summer brings, and I'm sure we can you know improve on on this year. Hopefully we get a lot of the injured players fit all season round next year and if we do that then I'm sure you know, we'll have a good season. Would you please welcome Mark, Shane, Ian and Nicky. It's my life! Bank Holiday Monday saw St James's Park stage a dazzling charity dinner with Westlife the star turn. The band were backing Shea Givens' fundraising night for the Macmillan Nurses' Appeal. Shea is the charity's patron and had persuaded his teammates to turn models for the night in a fashion show. You could tell most of them hated all the attention and only took to the catwalk in aid of a good cause. You know, my mum died of cancer when I was five years of age and something's very close to my heart and my family's heart, you know, so it's nice when you can put something back and, and give, try and raise so much money for... You know, lots of other families, especially in the North East, who have suffered through cancer. The evening was an outrageous success, with the auction raising hundreds of thousands of pounds. It also emphasised the high regard in which everybody holds United's popular goalkeeper, who's now committed himself to a new contract at St James's Park. Well done, Shay. 19 points from 21 had seen United climb to 7th in the table and the chance of a place in the Intertoto Cup. European football had seemed unimaginable during the season's darker days, but champions Chelsea provided the final day hurdle for Glen Roder's team. Jose Mourinho's men had looked unbeatable for most of the campaign, but with the title already in the bag, their form had fizzled out. It just needed one last push. Forward by Solano, away by Hoot, but only as far as Emre. Urge to shoot, does so! And didn't miss by very much. Hoof. It's a firm challenge on him and a smart little effort from Chopra. Pidgeley's throw out, intercepted well by Solano, who had Pidgeley stretching. Given, made a relatively easy save in the end. Corner. Towards uh, Amiobi and down. Oh, what a goal! Titus Bramble with a simply unstoppable volley. You don't save those. And is that the route to Europe via the Intertoto for Newcastle? Three on three for a moment here. in the end for Stephen Carr who in his quest to 
regained possession has drawn the wrath of the Chelsea players. It's a bad cross in the end, but nobody really there to trouble Chelsea at the back, but Amiobi's done well to get the better there of Glenn Johnson, and Pitsley! Spun around, having saved the shot. If they go on and win this game to get them into Europe, doesn't matter how it happens, they're back in Europe. Toontastic. The buzz is back on Tyneside. And Glenn Roder may have taken another huge step. All things considered, if things work out for him, he will be deserving of the full-time manager's job. So Newcastle United claim seventh place and the Intertoto Cup position. UEFA's backdoor entry into the UEFA Cup. So Newcastle edged out Bolton by two points to claim seventh in the Premiership and a place in the Intertoto Cup. The Roda revival had been astonishing. Ten wins and two draws from his 15 league games in charge. But the season wasn't quite over yet. The city still had to say goodbye and thank you to one of its most famous citizens. For ten years, Alan Shearer had been the ultimate Geordie. Committed, fearless, proud, a black and white icon. The whole of Newcastle would have squeezed into St James's if it could, just to see Alan wear the black and white number nine for one last time. His testimonial against Celtic was to prove a unique occasion. Alan's knee injury meant he could only kick off before retiring to the sidelines to enjoy his own big night. But even though he wasn't on the pitch, Newcastle's captain remained centre stage for every last minute. The flags are being waved as if we were in Spain. Tremendous spectacle. That's just fantastic. Shearer swallowing hard. It's a magnificent response to a magnificent player. But really... They've come to make noise, to lend colour, to lend emotion. And for once, I think there's a danger that the guard may slip this evening. We may never see the like of this night again. In the meantime, there's a football match. Here's Ramage. Here's a chance. There's a goal. And that's more like it. Albert Luque scores at the Gallagher end is applauded by the man of the moment. And Celtic just went to sleep. I thought, I wondered whether he actually drifted into uh, an offside position, but no, he held his run beautifully, and what a finish that is. Marshall's got absolutely no chance. Ramage, great little ball over the top. And here goes Maloney, and he's got the better of Ramage, and the referee is going to his pocket then remembers it's a testimonial. He <laughs> ran for 20 right. yards, ready to get a card out, and then thought, hang on a minute, this is Alan Shearer's big night. And I thought it was going to be red, you know, because Maloney was clean through. I mean, the penalty obviously is correct, but yeah. the card would have been most out of keeping. Yeah, he's just always a little bit ahead, and Ramage did catch him. <laughs> Sean Maloney was brought down, and Sean Maloney makes it 1-1. is Telfer. And there's Hartson! And John Hartson is threatening to spoil the script. Here's Chopra. Oh, Ferdinand! And a goal! It's 2-2! An own goal, Adam Virgo. And there are 90 seconds left. And I have to say that one or two of the challenges weren't as meaty as perhaps one might have expected. Well, Lee has found Ferdinand. And Les Ferdinand goes down. Referee says penalty. And guess what? Do you know who's going to take it? Well, it may be orchestrated, but the situation demands it. And 
well done Celtic for playing along. Off comes Michael Chopra. The last entry of the Gladiator. He spent this afternoon at the training ground practicing penalties. On goes the captain's armband. And Alan Shearer, who has rescued Newcastle so many times before, has a chance to do so again. For the very last time, save Alan Shearer, always scoring. And the curtain comes down so fittingly with a winning goal in front of his beloved Gallagher. Beautiful moment, truly beautiful moment, and you're right, John, well done, Celtic. Very, very gracious to do that on their part, and um, it's, it's the right and proper way for Alan Shearer to, to end his reign here at Newcastle, and it has been an outstanding, outstanding reign. Enjoy it one last time. Keeper guessed wrong, very cool, just waited and found this spot. Tremendous. Nobody seemed to want the night to end or the era of the Toons ultimate warrior. Alan had always cherished his personal privacy, but this was an occasion to be shared with his family. Shearer the dad seemed a little closer to his own claim. He was only a sheet metal worker's son from Newcastle and a true football legend. The final act of an amazing season was to confirm Glenn Roder as the club's new manager. Results had meant more than any coaching qualification. I'm very happy to be offered two years. Two years keeps everyone on their toes, particularly me. Make sure I'm very motivated to drive the club uh, forward and hopefully at last bring a, bring a cup back to St James's Park over the next two years. I think Glen Roder will do well. I think he's proved himself. So, yeah, very happy. He's the captain of the club, so he'll have the heart and the passion for it, I hope. This week, three years ago, I was uh, having a, an operation um, that would make what's happened today impossible. And what's happened today should give hope to everybody that the impossible does happen. Because I feel I've made it happen. You know, when I, when I was having that operation, it was never across my mind I was thinking of survival. You know, a family with three children, I was thinking of survival for them. But now, once I've got better and I've moved on over, over these last three years, the impossible has happened. It's been quoted as one of the top ten jobs in European football. And I firmly believe that, I think it is one of the top ten. Maybe even higher, uh, you know, uh, one of the top six, I would have said, in European football. Um, it's a big club, massive support, uh, it's an institution. Um, it's got everything you want here, fantastic ground, fantastic training facilities. We've got a good squad of players. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of other people's opinions in the game that uh, we've spoken to, there's a good squad of players here and uh, they all get well looked after, so all the ingredients are here to make the cake, if you like, it just uh, needs uh, baking.